So millions of us are gearing up for the Thanksgiving holiday. So what do you do or what do you need to do to keep from getting sick while traveling? None of us want to get sick. We've got the one and only Dr. Coley here to talk all about that and some other Thanksgiving headlines. We can't wait to hear. What's up, Doc? A little, hey a little round of applause. Why not? Why not? Yep, yep. So, Doc, we're all traveling or we know someone that's traveling to us. How do we not get sick when traveling over the holidays? It's kind of like running a marathon. You have to train for it. So you have to get your immune system ready for all that travel. So a bottle of water, that's really important. Whenever you're traveling, have it in your purse, have it in your backpack, and keep drinking enough so that you're going to the bathroom at least every two hours, what? which we often don't do. I'm sitting on the plane and people are traveling for a four hour flight. Never get up to go to the bathroom. Do you Al say something to them? Uh, sometimes I'm tempted to, Al, honestly. I'm like, are you drinking enough water? Water. <laughs> have you had your lipids checked? <laughs> have you seen your doctor lately? But I keep my mouth shut for the most part. But what I do do is I lead by example. So when the flight attendant comes by, I don't order alcohol. And then they come by with the cups of water, I'm always taking the water. So just be sure to always do that to sort of keep those mucous membranes nice and moist because that's how you're going to keep those bacteria and pathogens out of you. Because if everything's nice and moist, they don't get stuck. But if your airways are dry, that virus can get in and it's, cr it's cracked in there and they can sort of get into those crevices. So, so all the people that can't stand the word moist, you said it like four times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I secretly love that. Yeah. And I'm talking about waist up mucous membranes, guys. Oh, of course. So your nose, your mouth, yeah. and your lungs, okay? So Are there any other kind? To be specific. Yes. To be specific. I love you right now. All right. She's a doctor. Yep. She's a doctor. Yep. All right. How about those emergency packets? It's the only thing free that we hear have a DBL, so I drink them every morning. <laughs> Are those good for you? Do those work on a flight? So emergency has vitamin C, it has zinc, and it has vitamin B as well. So it's good kind of pumping up for your immune system. But I will say by the time you start taking those, it's probably a little bit too late. I'll also say that heavy doses of those vitamins, like in those packets, yeah. can actually cause side effects, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Stomach upset, nausea, oh. and you're having to pee out all your, your body's having to process all that extra vitamin. So once in a while, if you want to take it when you have a cold, it might help the cold to resolve faster. It's not going to prevent you from getting it, but I wouldn't take it every day. It has a lot of sugar and the best way to keep mm. your immune system healthy is just get sleep and do exercise. All the things we've talked about. Well, I feel like I'm getting something back if I get the free yeah. emergency. <laughs> just like on the plane when they're like, do right. you want the whole can? I'm like, yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, That's gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting them. Yeah. Same. I just take the staples. <laughs> You should be wearing. Mine is the headphones. Oh. Do you need the headphones? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> okay, let's talk about masks because it's obviously a very personal choice. Um, should we still be wearing masks or are the plain, it's plain ventilation enough to keep us safe? This is a good question now. So I, I like to say you want to put your face in airplane mode, which means that different parts of your plane journey, you may or may not want to wear a mask. So for example, we have a train that takes us to the concourse, right? It's a crowded little train. There's no ventilation. That's the time to put on your mask because you're all kind of crammed in there together. You're standing on the jetway ready to board or waiting to get off the plane. That's the time to put it on. But once you're on the plane, they've closed the door. They've turned on the ventilation system. You're actually breathing sort of HEPA filtered air. You want to open up the little air vents at the top. So you're flushing out the bacteria. You're creating turbulence in the air in front of you. So nothing's likely to linger. So I take a break when I'm on the plane, but getting on and getting off, I actually do end up wearing my mask. I always thought like when I turned the vent on, I was like blowing a disease from four seats back onto me. <laughs> so that is a myth <laughs> actually. No, a lot of people say that because people think that it's the, it's the three to five rows ahead of you and behind you that are kind of your temperature zone or what have you. But the ventilation system on a plane actually pulls out the air from the bottom. Bottom. So when you're turning on that vent, you're not getting air from somebody back there. You're getting air from the outside that's oh. actually been processed oh. through the HEPA filter. Nice. That's yes. so cool. Okay. Yeah. Enough about airplane ventilation. Let's get to the fun <laughs> stuff. Thanksgiving dinner. Now, you know, obviously the, the, there's this rumor, the urban myth that turkey makes you sleepy because of tryptophan. Let's put an end to that rumor right now. Is that true? So there's tryptophan in Turkey, right? And tryptophan can lead to serotonin, which kind of helps you relax, and also melatonin, which is a sleep hormone. But for the amount of turkey you would have to eat to get enough tryptophan, it's four pounds of turkey. Whoa, I could do have... that. <laughs> I could do that. I'm sure you could. Yeah. Tr try me. That's just a regular try day me. for you, right? Yeah, I know, yeah, I'm excited, Jeff. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's probably not the turkey, Al. It's the carbs, it's the fat, and it's the quantity of food. Because the more food we eat, the more our stomach gets distended. That also releases chemicals to our brain that trigger a little bit of a relaxation response. And if you think about the timing of it, it's about 60 to 90 minutes, right when it's time to do the dishes, you yeah. know, uh, when that food uh, coma kind of kicks yep. in. Yeah. But it's from those carbs. Whenever you have to undo your belt, you're about to take a nap. <laughs> that, that should be the rule. It is. Okay, let me ask you about red wine, because I feel like, and I don't know if it's a state thing versus, because when my husband and I went to Italy, I swear this didn't happen, but does red wine cause splitting headaches on some people, all people, and I'm not talking about drinking a bottle, like just even like a glass here or there. Why does it cause a splitting headache? It absolutely can, and science has tried to answer this question. We have many different theories, and we have a new study that actually shows a very interesting theory. So we used to think that it was sulfites, which are the preserved right. leaves in red wine, and that certain people are more sensitive to that. But that doesn't seem to be the case because it's in other types of wine as well. It's in dried fruit, so you don't always get those headaches. We used to think it's histamine, which is like an allergic reaction to the wine, and people who are maybe have asthma or more allergic type of symptoms are more likely to have those. Certainly, they're more likely to have the headaches, but it doesn't seem to also pan out that it's allergic because different histamine levels in wine don't seem to correlate with a headache. So now we think it's something called quercetin, which is essentially a polyphenol in the wine, um, in red wine in particular, which prevents the metabolism or the breakdown of the wine. So we think it's the, it's almost like a mild alcohol poisoning, so wow. to speak. Just Are like. Are there some red wines that don't have that? And it, it, some red wines have less of it okay. than others, and it depends on how it's fermented. The white wines don't have it, for example, and that's what we think it might be. It. Now, of course, the alcohol content of different wines is variable, so that can influence it as well. And then what your state is, Sam, is so important. So if you're a little dehydrated, of course, if you're hungry, everybody knows if it's on an empty stomach, and the rate at which you drink that wine. So if you're drinking it over two hours versus an hour or half an hour, that can certainly affect the response. But the way to tell that it's a red wine headache and not like a regular hangover headache is the timing. So about two hours after you'll get that sort of red wine headache, the hangover will be several hours mm. later. So that's how you can sort of tell, is it just the alcohol or is there something about the wine itself? Mm. All right. Mm. That, she doesn't want us to drink on the holidays and also <laughs> give more liquids to the people inside of us on an airplane so they have to keep telling us to get up so they can go to the bathroom. <laughs> Everybody's healthy. That's all that to care. Happy holidays. Holiday. I love oh, it. Oh, we love <laughs> Dr. You, Coley. DBL Nation, be sure to follow her on social media at Pyle Coley MD. Also, subscribe to her YouTube page for the latest science news and headlines. Thank you, Dr. Coley. Happy Thanksgiving.